Hello and welcome to Sarovsa's classes. Today we are going to discuss the ISI paper which uh, has been conducted today. The first question was find the number of ways one can express the number 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 3 into 5 to the power 5 into 7 to the power 7 as a product of two numbers A and B where the GCD or the HCF of A and B is 1 and both numbers are greater than 1 and one number is greater than the other. So that means I cannot choose the option of 1 into the number itself. This, this choice is out because both numbers have to be greater than 1. So then I can understand that I cannot split any of the numbers like if I split 2 to the power 2 into 2 and 2 and with the rest of the numbers then the GCD of these two numbers will be 2. So which means I cannot split any of the given numbers. That means I have to uh, take them in their powers, in the totality of their powers. So that means I can choose any of the four given uh, numbers. So 2 to the power 2 multiplied by the rest, 3 to the power 3, 5 to the power 5, 7 to the power 7. Then I can have 3 to the power 3 into 2 to the power 2 into 5 to the power 5 into 7 to the power 7. Then I can have 5 to the power 5 into 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 3 into 7 to the power 7. Then I can have 7 to the power 7 into 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 3 into 5 to the power 5. So these are the four choices that I can make using one of the set of numbers along with the other three. And the other set that I can create is taking them in groups of two which means 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 3 can be 1 along with 5 to the power 5 into 7 to the power 7 then I can have 2 to the power 2 into 5 to the power 5 along with 3 to the power 3 into 7 to the power 7 or I can have 2 to the power 2 into 7 to the power 7 along with 3 to the power 3 into 5 to the power 5 so these are the only 7 possibilities that exist there is no other combination that can be possible. So the answer is 7. The second question was find the sum of all the solutions of 2 plus log of x minus 2 to the base 2 equals log of 8 to the base x minus 2. Now while you deal with problems like this you should segregate the log functions from the rest of the function. So that means we transpose this to the other side and we get log 8 to the base x minus 2 means log 8 upon log x minus 2 and since the interval is given as 2 infinity so log x, x minus 2 will be always positive so we can take uh, log x minus 2 to be uh, uh, to be existent minus log of x minus 2 to the base 2 means log of x minus 2 upon log 2 this is equal to 2 now you assume log of uh, 2 by log of x minus 2 to be equal to a then this becomes 3 a because log 8 will eventually become 3 log 2. So 3a minus 1 upon a equals 2. So this so you solve this in a quadratic so you get 3a square minus 2a minus 1 equals 0. That means 3a square minus 3a plus a minus 1 equals 0. That means 3a times a minus 1 plus 1 times a minus 1 equals 0. That means a minus 1 into 3a plus 1 equals 0. That means a equals 1 or negative 1 by 3. Now a is log of 2 by log of x minus 2. Therefore, one solution is log 2 by log x minus 2 equals 1 which means x minus 2 equals 2 
or x equals 4 so this is one solution the other solution is log of 2 by log of x minus 2 equals minus 1 by 3 which means 3 log 2 that means log of 8 equals negative log x minus 2 that means log of 1 upon x minus 2 so that means 1 upon x minus 2 equals 8 or x minus 2 equals 1 upon 8 or x equals 2 and 1 by 8 so this is the second solution so the sum of these two solutions will be 4 plus 2 and 1 by 8 which is 6 and 1 by 8 which is 49 by 8 the third question is let f be a continuous function such that fx plus 1 equals half fx for all x uh, and let an be the integral of 0 to n fx dx for all integers n greater than or equal to 1 now which means that if i if you analyze this function the function is f1 and then half f1 and then 1 by 2 square f1 and it goes on like this so that means the nth term will be 1 by 2 to the power n minus 1 into f1 so this means that this is a gp and when n tends to infinity this becomes a infinite gp and if i add the uh, the sum of all the terms so sigma fx will be equal to f1 into 1 upon 1 minus half which is 2f1 right so that means sigma fx is nothing but sigma fx is nothing but the numerical approximation of the curve if i if i start with f of 1 so that means this is the area under the curve from x equal to 0 to x equal to n which is a n so which is the area under the curve from 0 to n and this is nothing but the summation of all the terms of fx so that means this this area would be equal to a, uh, the sum of fx now that means as n tends to infinity a n a limit n tending to infinity of a n would be limit n tending to infinity of fx which would be twice of f1 which means twice of integral of 0 to 1 fx dx so option d